They are critical to the safety of our homes, and they're designed to prevent fires, not cause them. Tonight, the NBC Bay Area Investigative Unit has uncovered problems with circuit breakers in thousands of Bay Area homes. Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski is here with the details. And Tony, you've discovered there's been really a long history of problems. There have, Jess Raj. It's supposed to make everyone safer, but, but this circuit breaker has a long history of failing. For decades, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has known about the problems but there has been no recall. It lit up cherry red. He's a master electrician. And it lit up that crawl space like the gates of hell. It could have killed me. Remembering a morning back in 1979, what? working a crawl space under a Bay Area house. I had to roll and approach that panel on my hands and knees through the small opening from the crawl space and shut it off manually with the panel on fire and spitting flame on my face. He blames a faulty circuit breaker, a Federal Pacific stab lock breaker. I've seen so many fires. I've seen so many places burned by these panels. It, it's frightening to me every time I see it over and over again. Circuit breakers are designed to prevent fires. When working properly, they stop the flow of electricity following excessive demand or a short circuit. Today, Federal Pacific circuit breakers are in millions of homes nationwide, including hundreds of thousands of Bay Area houses. They're most commonly found in homes built before 1990. Well, the breaker the, is a safety device that's supposed to prevent fires. If it doesn't work as required, uh, you get an increased risk of fire. Jesse Ehrenstein is an expert on Federal Pacific circuit breakers. He's an engineer. He spent more than 20 years researching the problem, and he's testified in lawsuits against the now defunct company. There is no inconsistency and no dispute as to the fact that they're defective. Ehrenstein says tests by the Consumer Product Safety Commission and a number of other credible labs all proved Federal Pacific breakers are not reliable. This is a Federal Pacific breaker. So how does it fail? Watch closely. We had a Federal Pacific circuit breaker tested at this lab in Berkeley. We started. It's a 60 amp breaker, the same as you find in many homes. We've doubled the current it's rated to handle. That means it should trip in less than two minutes. We're at a minute and 10 seconds now, and there's smoke coming out of the breaker. There's a definite smoke coming out. The lab cut away some of the plastic siding so you can have a closer look, an aesthetic change that experts say will not alter the functionality of the breaker. We're almost four minutes in, it's smoking and it hasn't tripped, why not? Uh, because the mechanical mechanism that is uh, supposed to be tripping the breaker is stuck. It raises many questions. How can a defective circuit breaker pass federal inspections? How did it comply with federal electric code and receive this UL stamp of approval? And how did a known defective product get into millions of homes? FPE was cheating on the testing and applying the label to product that was defective and did not meet the requirements. An accusation of cheating that is supported by this document obtained by NBC Bay Area. It's a 1982 SEC filing from the company that purchased Federal Pacific. Look closely, it reads, UL listings on circuit breakers made by Federal Pacific have previously been obtained through the use of deceptive or improper practices. According to this respected expert, Federal Pacific tricked government inspectors by using a hidden remote control to force the breaker to trip if it was not tripping properly. They represent uh, an abnormal hazard. They should be replaced. Lightspeed Electrical Services.